Women have the power to transform this world. We can end crime and violence if we all agree to do one thing. Share. Let's share our wisdom, share our time, share our talents, share our finances. But most of all, let's share our love. This is The Female Solution. Join me, Naima Latif, every morning, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, as we bring you stimulating discussions about the issues affecting our lives. If you're listening online at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash the-female-solution, press the blue button that says follow and get our daily topics every morning directly to your email and your smartphone. Hi, I'm Naima Latif, executive producer of the Female Solution Radio Show. We invite you to call in 515-605-9325 and participate in this daily think tank as we examine the challenges we face and develop solutions that restore peace and harmony. We are global transformers, changing the world from the way it is to the way it should be. We are one. Wherever we live on this earth, we are one human family. On behalf of our team of radio hosts, I'd like to extend a greeting to all the members of our family, whenever and wherever you may be listening around the world. To our family in China, Ni Hao. In India, Namaste. In Japan, Konnichiwa. In Korea, Annyeong Haseyo. In Russia, Zdrastutsye. In Germany, Guten Tag. In Poland, Dzień Dobry. In France, Bonjour. In Spain, Hola. In Italy, Ciao. In Egypt, Athen Wasalan. In Ghana, Akwaba. In Nigeria, Peleo. In South Africa, Saobona. In Senegal, Nangadef. In Kenya, Jambo. In Israel, Shalom. In Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Saudi Arabia, Assalamu alaikum. Greetings, and may peace be upon you all. Is Monday morning a struggle to get out of bed, into the swing of things? Well, don't worry, you are not alone. Join us for thought-provoking, stimulating, and mindful conversations on higher learning with Zelda Speaks for your Monday morning mindfulness session on Blog Talk Radio, The Female Solution, Mondays, 7.30 until 9 a.m. Be sure and send your ideas, thoughts, comments, and suggestions. Experience mindfulness moments with the mindfulness slash stress relief coach, Zelda Speaks. And thanks for sharing the mindfulness moment tip of the day. Stay on purpose, stay empowered, and stay tuned to your next session of Mindfulness on Higher Learning with Zelda Speaks. Make it a mindful day. And thanks for listening. We are live with Dr. Moretti today. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Moretti. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. And Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, used to be a emergency physician for like 35 years in the Chicago metro area. Then after that, I spent about three or four years doing urgent care and then decided maybe it was time to do something entirely different. Um, and uh, having chronic osteoarthritis, like a lot of people my age, I started exploring the use of um, cannabis to treat it and found it was highly effective and uh, saw a great number of weaknesses in terms of um, the ability of people to give useful information to prospective uh, patients. And so I decided to branch off into that, which I've been doing now for the last two years. And um, currently I work with uh, Dr. Jay Smith at 606 Health. And uh, what we do is a rather integrative approach to dealing with chronic pain. His area is chiropractic acupuncture. And uh, there's also physical therapy. And I do the medical cannabis certification. When we talk about cannabis, are we talking about the, the leaf the pills, or what form does this Well, this, this is one of the problems, is that um, 
there's not a lot of uh, guidance in terms of what products to use uh, that you would find at a dispensary. Um, my perspective is uh, I tend to uh, look upon it as uh, more of a pharmaceutical issue uh, where people should be um, directed to take specific items at a specific dose and also a, a time frequency um, rather than just um, picking up a flower, rolling a joint, and smoking it and hoping for the best. Mm. Uh, it's not exactly what I would call a scientific approach. Mm. Um, so um, uh, from my perspective, I uh, tend to prefer um, a pure CBD product, uh, which may involve the whole plant extract, which may be leaves and flowers, uh, although it's usually flowers, and also um, uh, specific I I items uh, that you can get, uh, like uh, vaporized uh, material or edibles that um, have THC in it, but at specific doses. Um, one of the problems with um, using medical cannabis, and particularly at dispensaries, is that uh, all of their products contain both THC and CBD at fixed ratios. Um, the problem with that I see with this is that in order to get the proper benefit from using a CBD product, you end up having so much THC in it that you will go around stoned most of the time. So you have to be able to approach this a little bit more scientifically so that you can get the benefits of pain relief and still function as a parent and, as, and then also in a working situation. Mm. What you choose to do after that is up to you. Okay, now you talked about the leaf and the flower. I didn't know there were two. Am I saying that wrong? Well, yeah, I mean, at, at plants have leaves and I also have flowers and so does a cannabis plant. And, uh, you know, and various products contained, uh, most of the products that you get in dispensaries contain uh, products derived from the flowers, but you can also uh, get whole plant extracts, which will have material in the leaves. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is a learning experience. Had no idea. I was under the impression that there was a cannabis, I'm sorry, I'm saying that right, a hemp leaf, and that they grind it up. Well, it, you know, most of it, it depends. Uh, when you're talking about hemp, you're talking primarily a CBD product because hemp is grown with a very low THC content. So that is uh, mostly used for uh, CBD. When you're talking about uh, the flower part of the plant, uh, then you're talking a lot of the psychoactive materials like the THC. Uh, but the, the reality is, is there are well over 100 different active uh, chemicals in uh, the cannabis plant. Um, and really at this point in time, only a few of them have uh, really been studied in any depth in terms of uh, what, how, what they do in terms of uh, helping people with various medical problems. Um, so there's a, a wide open area there that still needs to be explored. Did you say over a hundred chemicals? Oh yes, well chemicals? over a hundred, yeah. Wow. Yeah, but the main, main ones that you hear about are uh, THC and, and CBD. So what would you advise our viewing and listening audience, especially seniors who suffer with chronic Absolutely. joint ailments? Yeah. What would you suggest to them? Well, I would suggest they come and see me. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the reason is, is because uh, most people that, uh, that do certifications basically just do certifications, which is signing the paperwork so that you can get your cannabis certificate and go to a dispensary. You're on your own. Um, what we do here is try to give you specific guidance in terms of what products that you should use and how to use them to uh, treat specific medical problems. Mm -hmm. So uh, our, our mission is to take this much more seriously and to a higher level. Uh, if you're gonna be using something to treat a medical condition, then it needs to be treated like a pharmaceutical agent uh, mm -hmm. because it is. Um, and uh, and it's, it's important to know what kind of products to use, how to use them and how often to use them mm -hmm. and what concentration you should be using. Because if you just go to a dispensary on your own, having no previous knowledge of it, 
you will be completely lost and um, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's difficult to figure this stuff out on your own. Wow. So is there like a class for this certification or how does that work? Well, what we do here is uh, before I actually see you, I get to, uh, have copies of your medical records um, that uh, explain why, uh, you know, what medical condition is that you're seeking certification for. Mm -hmm. So when I see you, normally we'll... Um, do a, um, a quick physical exam, although these days uh, with the coronavirus, we've kind of uh, opted out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, we do see you with a you know, one-on-one -on -one in person if you want. Also, you can do a telemedicine appointment. Mm -hmm. um, but the bulk of um, uh, our interaction is going to be uh, trying to give you some direction in terms of what to take for whatever problem it is that you're here for. Okay. Now, is I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos where there are children who are having health problems and they have been cured. Well, I don't know if the, that's the incorrect word to use, but they've been helped with the use of cannabis. Sure. Children to seniors to 100 years old. So mm -hmm. is there, there is no, or is there an age limit? Well, or? the problem is, is from, from my perspective, most of the people that I see um, are uh, dealing with uh, chronic medical conditions. So I think the age group is mostly 50s, 60s, 70s, mm. and even older than mm. that. Now certainly there are specific conditions that are um, uh, amenable with, for being treated with cannabis in, in pediatric age group. And those are probably mostly chronic uh, seizure disorders. It's a very special group and that has to be dealt with very specially because mm -hmm. one of the problems is, is that cannabis um, can also retard brain development. And so you don't want to use it indiscriminately in children unless they absolutely need it. Mm. You have to weigh benefit risks with them, mm. as you do with anything, but more so with the child. Okay. And how long is this certification process? Um, well, you know, typically it's usually about 15, 20 minutes, but um, I don't really have any problem spending a lot more time mm -hmm. with people uh, on it because you know, our goal is to make sure that they get what they come for. Mm. And sometimes that may take a lot longer. Okay. What is the, if I may ask the question, what is the worst case scenario that you've ever experienced with someone who came in who has chronic issues and you've seen amazing results? Um, the, most, most of the uh, people that get, uh, and I'm seeing more of that now because since the medical cannabis program has been now in the state for uh, five, four, four to five years now, um, you see people that are coming back that have had a three-year certification and they're back for renewal. And, um, and it's very interesting talking to them to see how well they've been able to uh, treat the condition they were certified for. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people with chronic pain, they've gotten completely off of uh, prescription pain medications, particularly opioids, which is um, a really important thing. The other condition that uh, we see a lot of people that uh, get uh, great relief is PTSD, which is very common, mm -hmm. particularly in ex-military people. <laughs>
for instance, if you fall and break your ankle or have, you know, an orthopedic injury like that, cannabis probably won't help you very much. Mm. Opioids will mm. for the first week or so. Mm -hmm. The idea is, is to use it when you need it and be off of it as soon as possible. Um, cannabis is, um, is more useful for chronic issues. Mm. What's the difference between acute and chronic? Well, chronic is ongoing, like a problem that you would have for weeks, months, or even years. Mm -hmm. Acute is like, for instance, if you sprained your ankle, you're going to have pain for maybe several days after the injury. So that would be more of an acute problem. Okay, so after the accident, I had surgery on my ankle, and I was on it for months. Right. So is that acute well i think that, that is more when you're when you're talking months that starts going into the chronic into issue the chronic. Okay. and this is where there's been so much of a problem with opioid addiction is keeping people on drugs unnecessarily long where they become physically dependent and mentally dependent on them okay i've heard back when i was a teenager uh, how many years ago was was that 10 maybe yeah yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> that some people get addicted to cannabis. Is that true? I'm not aware of people being addicted to it. I'm not sure what addiction to it would actually be like. Um, there are certainly people who uh, indulge in using cannabis uh, on a daily basis and throughout the day. Um, I'm not sure that they're taking it for a specific medical <laughs> condition, so uh, I, I'm not sure I can address an accurate answer on that. Um, and I'm sure there probably is on some level some kind of um, a more psychological addiction. I'm not sure mm. that there is a physical addiction mm. to it. Okay. In other words, if you've been on it for a long time, you're probably not going to go through what would be a typical withdrawal syndrome. Mm. Is there withdrawal do people have withdrawal from cannabis i'm not aware of that mm, okay now certainly there are you know side effects as uh, of using cannabis are as there are to any drug and you have to um be very careful uh, when you start taking it to um, make sure that uh, you know that you you can control some of those issues you know uh, some of the main ones are um paranoia um it is one of them and usually that's if uh if a person is using too much of the thc which is the psychoactive component and my feeling is is that for for most uh medical conditions if you use the proper um you know products you can avoid that when what do you mean when you say proper products because if, if you're using um uh you know, cannabis products that will not get you high at, at the dose you're, you're, t you're taking, mm -hmm. it can eliminate some of the issues of paranoia and, and a, a lot of that um, mm. th that some people would, would experience. Mm. Okay. Wow, this has been very informative. I've never spoken to anyone about cannabis certification. And the fact that you said people came back three years later, so there is a time period Right. Well, when you, in Illinois, uh, for instance, it var this varies from state to state, but in Illinois, when you uh, get a certification for cannabis, you get to choose whether or not you want it for one, two, or three years. Mm. Um, and the, the rates are different. It's like $100 for one year, $200 for two years, and then 250 for three years. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're not sure at the beginning if it's going to be a benefit to you, then a lot of people will opt for one year. Mm. Um, and you have the, also the option at the, term, at the end of that, say that one year, you can renew it um, for another year or two years if you want. Okay. So the process is that the person, the patient would come and see you mm -hmm. and you would determine no they would determine if they want it for one year or yeah it's years. up to them uh, the okay. decisions they have to make is, is uh, they have to decide how many years they want the certification for and also um, initially uh, on the uh, uh, certification forms they also have to designate a dispensary that they want to go to oh so it has to go to a specific dispensary. you have to you have to identify a specific dispensary However, after you get your certification, uh, you can go online and change the dispensary if you're not happy with it. 
Okay. But, it, but for the initial um, uh, certification, you do have to specify one. How many dispensaries would you say there are in Chicago? I don't know. I'm sorry. Don't have a clue. Yeah. Neither do I. Um, I just see the read the ads in the reader and right. Yeah, I, reader. I, I I don't know. I somehow in, something in the thirties comes to mind, but I think that may be for the whole state. Okay. So on a closing note, what would you say to someone who is watching this this video or listening and thinking to myself, hmm, I'm in a lot of pain here, and I'm a little unsure what to do. What should they do? Well, you know. Um, I like to be rather pragmatic about stuff like that. And particularly if you're dealing with somebody like myself who is, you know, in the senior age group, you have problems that quite frankly are never going to be better. Mm. Okay? Every day you're going to wake up with aches and pains. They don't go away. <laughs> Damn you about what basically you have to do is decide how you are going to deal with pain for the rest of your life to maintain a good quality of life. Mm. And you have a choice. You can, you, you know, you can uh, work with pharmaceutical agents with all of the side effects they have, the addictive potentials, um, you know, and a lot of people get tired of that. Um, and cannabis is a very natural and, uh, and suitable alternative to any of that. Mm -hmm. um, so f from my perspective, it's, it's, I think it's a no brainer. And I think as you know, in, in this, Coming years, there is going to be much, much more scientific evidence to show, you know, the efficacy of using cannabis for medical problems, and the fact that you can do it now on your own, I think is great. That you can do what on your own? That you can take these uh, these products on your own. You can uh, figure out how to take them and what works best for you, because everybody's different, and so mm. there's a. There's a trial and error period with it. You know, we give you some direction which can expedite that, but um, but you're still going to have to tailor it to your own needs. Mm -hmm. Now, what about exercise when you're on cannabis? Is is that are there any restrictions with that? Not that I'm aware of. You know, um, there again, it depends on um, what you're taking it for. Um, you know, and uh, from from. My perspective on that is, you know, you're going to be taking products that are not going to get you stoned, so it shouldn't be interfering with it. Because, I mean, the reality of it is that most of us have to, you know, we have lives that we have to uh, conduct and, uh, and and perform. And, um, you know, if you want, it's like drinking. I mean, if you want to have a cocktail in the evening or a couple of them, that's fine. But you're not going to be doing it during the daytime when you have to do, you know, work that requires a lot of cognitive, you know, ability. Mm -hmm. um, so... You know, that. Well said. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you very much for uh, allowing us the opportunity to learn a little bit more sure. about cannabis. Anytime. There's a lot to learn. And <laughs> certification. Because when I first saw the sign that said certification, I thought that meant that I would, or myself or anyone, would come and take a class mm -hmm. and learn about hemp in cannabis and things of that, but that's not what certification means. No, certification, you know, technically really just means signing the form so that you can go and get to your certificate. Mm. You know, but like I said before, we do a lot more than that mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, I think you're doing people a disservice if, um, if you just permit them to use a product but don't give them any useful information on how to use it. Mm. Um, and that's where, you know, things become different. And that's one of the reasons why I like doing what I do, because I take these products. I mean, I have chronic osteoarthritis. I know it's never going to go away. Mm. And I wasn't too thrilled about having a knee replacement or any of that stuff. Right. And, um, and cannabis obviated that issue for me. So awesome. I'm, I'm all in favor of it. All righty. Well, I want to thank you so very sure. much for this opportunity to share with our viewers and listeners. And now I'm going to turn this off so I can get some treatment myself. Yeah, there you go. Well, thank <laughs> you so much. All right. But there's a long tradition of these types of... Uh, uh, voices of conscience. Um, so I just immersed myself in the world of St. Sabina and, and spent time with Father Mike and, and his peacekeepers and the community there and tried to learn as much as I could. 
Thank we you. love you on Windy City Live. Yes, we do. Tell us, how did all this ha happen? How did this come about? Well, I play me. I play Val Warner in Chirac, which is really cool. So when people see this movie, they are literally seeing Val, and I am a reporter in the movie. Talk about the violence, but what can we do personally? I think we got to be engaged, and I think engaged in a number of things in our block, in our home, in our neighborhood. We got to be engaged. We got to fight the issues. We got to fight a government that is abandoned, you know, whole communities on the south and the west side. Um, we got to fight a governor who's cut out every youth employment program who's cut out violence prevention programs, who's abandoned um, our communities and the poor and the vulnerable. And I think we've got to reach out to our brothers on the street and love them and respect them and help them, not just demonize them. My participation is only because of Mr. Spike Lee, our leader, our director, and uh, he reached out to me and blessed me with the opportunity to be in this film and said that his mission was to save lives in the south side of Chicago. I'll, I'll, I'll just say, like, this. first of all, the history of coming to Chicago and telling my jokes and as a young cat, I'm 37 now, I started about almost 15 years ago. Elroy taking me under the wing, let me do some jokes here and there for the radio stations and all that kind of stuff. More than that, we are more than that. We're greater than that, and I feel like in places like this, or Chicago, or whatever you want to call it, the hood, whatever you want to call it, like it's too much attention dwelled on the negative. I learned that no matter what you do and how much of a genuine heart you have, and if you're coming from a good place, people are going to criticize if they don't agree with what you're doing. Hi, we're from Empire, and you're watching the Higher Learning Network. So, how long have you been standing here? Not too long, like an hour. So, this is we're moving in. Yes, this is a good sign. Yo, what's up? It's your man Tony Schofield from 106.3 Chicago's R&B, and you are watching Men on Higher Learning. Now, I used to hang around with some men that was into some higher learning. It just wasn't that kind of higher learning, but I got myself together now, okay? What is it that you do in your quiet time, in your meditation time, that allows you to bring us the films that you do? I sit courtside the Mass Square Garden, world's most famous arena. Running for Cook County State's Attorney, you're watching the Higher Learning Network.